All right. So what exactly should the government be able to do and what powers should they have to do it, right? And where I'm going with this is basically a review of the book Capitalism and Freedom by Milton Friedman. If you need, here is the cover of at least the version I have. There's multiple different versions. It was originally published in 1962 with versions with more editions, I'll say, published in 1982, 2002, and 2020, right? And I believe this is the version I have. The, I'm sorry, the version I have was published in 2020. Right. And so a bit about Milton Friedman before we get into stuff and why you should read the book. Right. So he was lived a rather long life um, from 1912 to 2006. Right. He had the Nobel Prize of for Excellence in Economics that he got in 1976. And then he gained the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the National Medal of Science, both in 1988. And he was a senior research fellow at the Hoover Institution of Stanford from 1977 to 2006. And then he was the Paul Snowden Russell Distinguished Service Professor Emeritus of Economics at the University of Chicago from 1946 to 1976, right? And so why you should read this book. One, it's not that long. Um, and two, it's rather, it, it's fundamental for one studying economic theory, we'll say, and we'll leave it there. Um, well, we won't leave it there. But anyways, why I enjoyed reading this book and why I kind of recommend it is he explicitly states his views on the role of government and doesn't just assume they should be in everything, right? And so that's one thing you have to keep in mind is, yes, you might have particular views on a certain topic of maybe how things should be, but the role of government should be a separate question from that. So basically, again, what I mean by that more explicitly is if you believe in, say you have X political topic and you believe Y should, is the way it should go, right? And so the policy, sh the policy should be Y, right? And so basically the role of government and the scope that it has in control of that or that it should, the Thing, the powers it should have um, are is a separate question, right? So what government, sh just because you want something to be a certain way, the role of government in that thing is a separate question, right? So keeping that in mind, more about what this book is specifically about. So as he says, um, to take a direct quote, competitive capitalism serves as both a device for achieving economic freedom and a necessary condition for political freedom. And he goes more in depth than that in the book, right? And so this book itself was described as one of the most significant works of economic theory ever written, which is one of the reasons why I bring it up. And so again, the scope of government must be limited. The major function is to protect our freedom both from enemies outside our gates and from our fellow citizens. Right. And so basically anything beyond that, you know, from his point of view, um, at least from what I gather from the book, um, they should not be allowed to do. Right. Basically, that is the extent of government power. And then anything beyond that is kind of an overreach. Right. And so beyond that, Government powers must be dispersed. So he says better in the county than in the state and better in the state than in Washington. So even the government power itself should be as decentralized as, po as possible, right? Basically having, try not to centralize power to the extent that basically the federal government's doing everything, right? The whole separations of power should be a thing. And the reason he says this is, as he says, the power to do good is also the power to do harm those who control the power today may not tomorrow and more important what one regard what what one man regards as good another may regard as harm right and so all things that need to be kept in mind and that's one thing that should be noted when you see certain ideas or ideals um, pushed very hard in politics or whatever one thing to keep it or like specifically with the additions of more power right or more giving certain governments more power to do certain things right and i'm leaving it rather vague because that's the point right insert whatever additional power you want to have 
just that may just because you might have someone in office now who maybe wouldn't abuse that or use it to do harm um, that doesn't that doesn't guarantee that future people in office won't right and so you have to keep that in mind again it's obviously the same person's not going to be there forever even if you're in a dictatorship eventually people die right that's how it is <laughs> but with that being said yeah anyways so a little bit more i guess superficially about the book kind of going through the table of contents to give you more of more specific things that he talks about right i don't like to go in depth on the actual like contents of the book right just because that kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> of you reading it yourself and gathering your own opinions and kind of synthesizing your own conclusions about it in general and so a lot of what he talks about is so he talks about the relation between economic freedom and political freedom and the distinctions there and the, also the connections there uh, then the role of government in a free society which we somewhat touched on before but he expands on it in depth in a whole in a, its own chapter uh, the control of money and how that should be and how that should be played out i guess and so then he talks about international financial and trade agreements uh, fiscal policy, the role of government in education, uh, capitalism and discrimination, and how those kind of play together, um, or don't play together. Leave that for you to read yourself. Um, a monopoly and the social, sorry, monopoly and the social responsibility of business and labor, right? Kind of distinguishing, you know, how companies or even major corporations, um, same thing, but how they can define their own social responsibility or if they should even define it and that sort of thing um, talks about the occupational licensure and so that's basically like doctors and lawyers and that sort of thing and how that kind of plays out in terms of freedom and various kind of principles we'll say of capitalism that sort of thing uh, the distribution of income social welfare and then the alleviation of poverty and talks about those things in depth in their own chapters, right? So again, here is the cover of the book if you wanna get your own version. Again, this was, from what I gathered, a must read for anyone studying kind of economic theory in general. Um, even if you don't hold the monetarist view and we'll leave it there. So anyways, make sure to, if you do read the book, um, come back and comment what you've gathered from it and that sort of thing maybe you gained something that i didn't and so on and have a discussion in the comments it's kind of the whole point of these videos in general but anyways i'm going to leave this one here so i hope you guys have a good night and i will see you on the next one